Hello, how's it going? Yes, my mic is registering. Brendan, could you talk for me, please? Hello, how's it going? Ah, beautiful. I think we're both at a good level. So, hey, uh, X and Y, this is where you are. Uh, I'm DB. I'm Brendan. Hey, uh, we are streaming today on the lands of the Camaragal and Gadigal peoples of the Eora Nation, so we pay our respects to the elders past, present, and emerging. And we are, we are talking about a video game, Resident Evil Village, which I finished on Wednesday and Brendan finished a matter of, what do we want to say, three hours ago? Less than that? <laughs> yeah, around three hours ago. Yeah. Fresh in our minds, for sure. Either way. Um, fresh in our memories. Fresh in our memories, 100%. I was, I did mention, uh, if anyone cares, cares to bring up the tweet as evidence, that uh, I was going to play Mercenaries as we do this. I needed to take some time to actually familiarize myself with it so long as i so my attention wouldn't get divided didn't get that time so we're just gonna chat and i feel like it's gonna be better that way anyway um so look you know as as i've just established brandon it is super fresh in your mind you saw the end credits roll today mm -hmm. what is the first thing you want to comment on um it's really good mm -hmm. it's really really good mm -hmm. it's like a mashup of re4 re2 remake and re7 which mm. i haven't played but i assume it's like it feels like a sequel to all of them which is great so you haven't played re7 no no neither had i like i um i played the demo back when it first came out and had trouble getting through it because it just spooked me too much which is a rare reaction but definitely very real i have very vivid memories of like pausing and sort of taking a breather <laughs> because there was just something about it that put me on edge and so i just watched let's plays and spoiled myself on the story that way but something about re8 i think the re4 inspiration being so present sold me yeah. on because re4 i love and i've played that one all the way through so i figured i'd be okay that way um but yeah I, I, like i've got a google doc here and look I, at this point i'll start playing cutscenes back uh on mute um and with closed captions and uh maybe with one and a half sp maybe 1.25 speed so that we get through it at a good clip um as far as big kahuna spoilers go mm. like the bit you know it's right from the outset what a, you know we're we're on a spoiler cast anything goes what's the first thing what's the first story element you would like to talk about and figure out I think it's worth bringing up that by the end of the game, and I'm jumping right to the end because yeah, of course, right at the end. But the game starts to trip over its own dick a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> like this, in terms of the story. Um, in term, it, it gets very muddy at the end. What what, what jumps to mind as a scene in which you were like, "Oh, that's really dick trippy." As soon as from the point where Ethan gets his heart ripped out which is really cool and then you mm. swap over to chris yep which yep. is also cool that was cool that was to very me, cool. It, it was cool but to me it felt like all right they didn't know how to end this mm. which is fine but it mean like i very much appreciated the chris section because i like in these games when you get to the end and it's like you should just start mowing down enemies <laughs> yeah um, it's still chung i died i think twice in that section because just because uh, the reload animation took a little bit too long. And mm. if you press the uh, the block button, it cancels your reload animation, which is really annoying. Right, yeah. And with Chris, you were reloading a fair bit more because you were just like sort of luxuriating in the fact that you had practically infinite machine gun ammo, or at least comparatively. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. And and I remember that too, just that like little dislodge of, of a clip from the gun and then putting it back in. It felt very cool, very mm. military -y. I definitely also came close to dying on that one. Just got overwhelmed. <laughs> as, especially as, like, at that section where it's tasking you with, like, doing the laser pointer, calling in the airstrike, which mm. strikes me as a little bit Call of Duty-ish. Is that fair to say? I haven't played much Call of Duty, but I feel like that's got an airstrike mechanic in there somewhere. I think what you are what you might be tapping into is Modern Warfare 2. Sure. There is a mission where you are you have the the visuals of uh someone performing a drone strike or an mm. airstrike on someone yeah and it is framed to be eerily reminiscent of the video chelsea manning released of journalists being shot so right. I, I think that, that might be why it's, it's 
some very King Call of Duty memories, but not really. It, it reminded me of an old game I played called Conflict Desert Storm 2. Oh. <laughs> what, what was, was that, that one? one? What did you play that one? It was on one? PS2. Right. <laughs> Actually, I played the first one. I have the sequel. Okay. First one, I mean, it's absolutely disgusting Gulf War propaganda. Sure. But it's uh, couch co-op multiplayer, and it's really fucking fun. Oh, yeah. It's really, really fun. <laughs> Anyway. Well, we've talked about doing PS2 co-op games via the magic of uh, special cables, so you know maybe yeah. maybe we could add that to the roster. Yeah, um, talk more about Desert Storm. I just wanted to. I was a bit distracted just then because I was looking up voice actors. Yep. Right. Yeah. Because both Chris and Heisenberg's voice actors sound like they are uh, Keanu Reeves. Neither of them are. Hmm. We would Rather. <laughs> Um. The guy who does Ethan, his name is Todd Soley. Yeah. His face looks like... He does even look... A, he could be a McElroy brother. Okay. Like <laughs> it, says, it says here, you might know him as Christian slash Vince McMahon. Christian is a wrestler. Uh, in the old WWE SmackDown vs. Raw games. Oh. Wow. Which I don't understand because they have... They don't have voice actors in those games. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so I don't yeah. know what, where the fuck realsport101.com is getting their Resident Evil knowledge. Yeah, that's that's fair enough. You would you would plumb his older credits, and if he had a voice in a, ga- a WWE game you played back in the day, you would remember it, presumably. <laughs> like any I, multiplayer game with sound bites, you would hear those I, over and over yes. again. I have every SmackDown vs. Raw video game, and I've played them all to death. Nice. So think i would know yeah <laughs> but anyway yeah, that's fair enough but uh no unfortunately ethan not a wwe fixture i thought you were going to tell me he was a wrestler but <laughs> no. but no uh sadly no um look here's the thing here's the spoiler i want to come out with here's the thing i want to talk about ethan's a bloody mold man he's made yeah. of mold he like yeah. just when i was talking about this story getting muddy yeah <laughs> okay Oh, just when God. Evelyn's talking to him in the in the in the purgatory realm or whatever it is, the shared consciousness. You're here for a spoiler chat, Bianca. Awesome, and Bianca is also on board with the mold man. Um, oh, man. Yeah. So I was hoping you had played RE7. You just told me you didn't, of course, just to catch Bianca up. Nah. Um, because it felt very retconny to say like, oh, you know that bit in RE7 where Jack Baker punched you in the face? That was you dying, actually. No, you you were just dead straight up. Um, and it feels okay. watching that bit of RE7 back, it feels like they didn't always plan on that. <laughs> so that being said, I don't think it's too far out of anything that Resident Evil has done before. No, so don't don't worry too much about that. I mean, I'm pretty sure Jill becomes like a bioweapon soldier in RE5 or something. Oh, so don't worry about don't worry about that. Okay. As far as it being out of step or yeah. just betraying some part of the you series, righto? Yeah, I think the thing is you don't really... Like, the Resident Evil games, the stories get real dumb. Mm. But I think the thing with 8 was it was very simple mm-hmm. until we got to the point that I mentioned, which is Ethan gets his heart ripped out. Mm-hmm. And we also find out he's a mold man. He's a mold man. <laughs> Mold man in the morning. Good mold man to you. Um, yeah, I just I had that written in Google Docs and I had to just work it in before we moved on. Um, but the whole thing about him, about I think the thing that makes it a bit more palatable as well is the very kind of wisecracky, self-aware thing of like, Ethan, didn't you wonder why you got hurt so badly and it didn't matter? Didn't you wonder? Is, wasn't that strange to you? And well, like them big. sort of justifying it after the fact because he's he's swamp thing basically he's yeah. <laughs> so like did that and I remember talking to you in the chat uh, you told me you you messaged me right after he got his hand cut off by Lady Dimitrescu mm. um, and how funny that was and I said something to the effect of I really hope they don't explain that away at some point where it's just like yeah. oh boy this healing water has such amazing properties right what an age we mm. live in. And I was very confident I didn't want any lore about it. But yeah. when they nah, explain it that way, because it stretches back so far and because it ties into this sort of reframing of him as this dogged, determined, determined beyond mortal life character, mm. um, 
it had some kind of emotional resonance in it for me and i didn't mind it yeah do you do you feel like like looking back at those bits where it, it it's cartoonishly violent and ethan's lost i think three limbs over the course of the of the uh of the mm. series of seven and eight um do you feel like it took away from those moments or do you not mind no i so you mentioned when i mentioned that i laughed when he got his hand cut off it wasn't the getting the hand cut off that made me laugh hmm. it was that he gets his hand tries to put it back i was just like uh, he's just, uh, hey it's fixed good <laughs> it, was, it was the most video gamey yeah thing it ever. reminded me of like when you put a hand on a lego man it's like mm. a little claw and a little pipe and then you just slot it into the hole it's just like <laughs> you know? yeah for sure yeah but like yeah it's like i mean it's a resident evil game the game inception is running around uh finding herbs mixing herbs and that heals you from being bitten by a zombie like i took that as a video game contrivance like mm. much many video game contrivances yeah of the past yeah it's a it resident evil is always like from what i understand has always been a series that's just very boldly saying this is where you suspend your disbelief you know it's, yeah get, worry, o- get off the train if you're not a fan like <laughs> um and bianca also mentioned in the chat um the bit where he's hung up by hooks by the lady yeah. and he just sort of he's already hanging but he like somehow manages to pull his hands down even mm. further which is physically impossible and just rip his hands in half yeah and then he gets some water and that's fine <laughs> like it's just it's just layering it on right at, yeah. at this first sort of section of the four sections i mean and, for the left hand i was like he's not using his left hand anyway because he's already lost some fingers so yeah. don't worry about that true and then the right hand was like eh, a bit dodgy but mm. anyway and so so like i brought up the hand getting cut off because that was like Oh, the one time I had laughed, and then by the end of the game, I was laughing a lot more. Mm-hmm. Like the very, the very end sequence, great, lots of fun. Um, You're driving around in a fucking tank. Oh yeah, <laughs> shooting fucking what's his name? Uh, Car- uh, what's the Car- Heisenberg? Godzilla? Heisenberg. No, uh, Crushosaurus or whatever. Oh okay, <laughs> we'll go with that. Yeah, Crushosaurus. <laughs> yeah. Heisenberg's mutate. Like whoever. I remember, so, like, back when Lady Dimitrescu was revealed and people were going nuts and people were like, y'all are going crazy as though she's not going to look like this at the end. And someone posted, like, this pile of slimy gore with her mm-hmm. face in it, like, a little cutout. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yep. Exactly. That's exactly it's what happened. Evil, it's exactly what happened. And sure enough, with Heisenberg, it happens as well, but with, like, a tr- you know, a monster truck rally edge of, like, you and a tank, him being mm. this buzzsaw monstrosity. Did you and hear... And it road turning into a fish. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mariah turning into a giant fish. That was pretty yeah. cool. Um, did you hear, speaking of um, that last battle, did you hear the moment where basically the, the factory blows up and yeah. he's like, and because of Chris is doing, Chris has moved in yeah. with his guys to blow up the army and he's done mm-hmm. it. Um, so Heisenberg turns around and he's like, no, my army. And mm-hmm. he's, he curses out Chris and he specifically says, that boulder punching asshole. Mm-hmm. Did you hear that? Oh, I get it. Yeah. I did not pick up on that. No. I had the captions on, so, like, I saw it, and I... It was, like, 11, 12 at night, and I had to, like, suppress laughter suddenly. Because I just... did hear and see it, but I didn't internalize what that meant until you just mentioned it. Uh-huh. Anyway, it is a reference to the end of Resident Evil 5. Yes, a very... So I didn't know that until I got... till we were actually doing that, and I came into that exact Resident Evil... Anyway. Mm-hmm. But... That's th- this is what happens when Resident Evil hires a, an American screenwriter, someone who's like willing to take the piss because it's kind of kind of in vogue at the moment, I suppose. If you want to yeah. like set yourself apart, to just be, have there's a good another, attitude. There's a very brief uh, and also very obvious reference to RE4 where the Duke asks, "What are you buying?" and then he's like, "Oh, it's just what a friend said to me before," mm. which confirms that the RE4 merchant was not a figment of. Uh, what's his name leon's imagination hmm. but i mean <laughs> i like it, the duke better though i like the duke better as well i like that moment in the caravan on the way to the last battle where mm. ethan says to him hey look dumb probably a dumb question but what are you where are you from yeah. and the duke's like i don't know <laughs> <laughs> and it's duke like good seems good to, yeah yeah he seems to have genuine care for ethan which is interesting kind of but like you get out of lady's castle with the first dirty flask and he's just like mm. well that's your daughter in your hand right there and he's like that's a bizarre thing to say 
Mm. And like Ethan's like, sure, just tell me what's going on. He's like, settle yeah. down. Like he's a little out of touch, a little bit, despite yeah. being such a good vendor. <laughs> There's also notes in the castle that talk about the Duke actively doing business with all of them and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like Which... he is a neutral party still despite yeah. the fact that he gets made <laughs> and like looking at the model viewer afterwards because i went on a spending spree having finished the campaign and just bought like or, like there's a trophy for getting all the concept art so i'm like oh well jing 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 yep. um and so i looked at the model viewer which is very kind of prestige gaming i feel it's such a naughty dog thing mm. just put in these super high-res models of everything in the game weapons and stuff yeah and uh, i was looking at him i, I got to know. lady dimitrescu oh, and like I realized if you zoom in on a dress, like it's yellowing and old as hell. It's like, oh, it's, yeah. it's kind of festy and gross. Like I remember mm-hmm. someone saying like, it's so funny how Lady Dimitrescu is this elegant regal character and her daughters mm-hmm. are like slipknot roadies kind of <laughs> like just gross looking, gross mm-hmm. looking people. Um, but it's I like, only... Sorry. she's super, she's super gross in her own way. It's like, she doesn't gotten a new dress in what hundred years or something like that. It's just yeah, kind of aging on the vine. Anymore. That's what I was going to say was that timelines are a bit muddled because I just before we started, I forgot that at the start of the game, there are still people in the village and they all died. I forgot. I totally forgot about that. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that whole, <laughs> that really begs the question. What was the point of that whole bit at Louisa's farmstead? Like it was cool and it made for a lot mm. of trailer material and like it, it, you know, that classic sort of zombie slash monster survival scenario of like, all the survivors cooped up in a hut, slowly turning on yeah. each other, slowly getting crabby. Um, but like, it really didn't factor into anything, did it? Yeah, I think it was um, it's more of a tone setter, I guess, mm. than anything. Maybe there's a bit more information if we go back and play it now that we've finished the game. But yeah, yeah, and, and like, I in the back of my mind, I'm thinking like at one point, Louisa, when you first met her, and Julian is the name of the guy who's holding a gun to them, to the two yeah. of them and um she goes julian go make yourself useful go check the grounds and so i thought are they gonna like bring him back somehow like he's yeah. been zombified turn into a zombie dog that we got to defeat in a boss fight or something mm. you know and maybe and that may well have happened and i just didn't notice it but i i, I figured i just had this impression that like all all of what was going to go on there was going to factor in more than it did and it just didn't which yeah. is a, which is a, it's a choice you know it's a purposeful choice I feel there's like there's more stuff going on. Yeah. So that's fine. Wasn't too disappointed, but but it's interesting. The pacing is very interesting mm. and good because you start at like I'll I'll go through the pacing. Yeah. And you just think about this roller coaster that we're going on. So mm-hmm. you're starting off in the village, you're getting your bearings, exploring the village. Mm-hmm. It's incredibly resident evilly. And then you go It's very quiet at first too. Like you hear mm-hmm. you're shuffling in the branches, but yeah yeah and then you go to your <clears throat> and then you end up in the castle that's very resident evil one and two because it's like one big what a mansion yeah but it's worth mentioning as well like that first place part of the village it's quiet and then you meet the guy and then there's a very yeah. re4 situation in which you're just swarmed and you're not meant to kill everybody i think it's yeah. possible technically but for, but it the game assumes that you're going to be running around in terror not knowing what yeah. what the fuck to do and yeah. that's exactly how it plays out yeah and then it's louise's farmstead and then you go to the castle is what you're saying it's just a yeah. it's just a very interesting classic well-paced re- intro sequence but yeah and then we get to the castle and then we begin the quest properly yeah and then so you do that and then after that is ben Benito, which you go to a small house with one enemy in the entire house mm-hmm. well i mean there's that so there's two yeah and you're without your weapons so that you literally have no choice but to go around clicking on things basically it's almost like an adventure game yeah i'll say that baby my least favorite didn't win the game Mm -hmm. what like as in just sheer terror that it invoked or just annoying to deal with or both no yeah so like good to have in the game Mm. but like fuck that yeah so (laughs) one one of my thesis thesis sigh the thesis the is that, yeah whatever like, try to hit on as many phobias that people have as possible mm-hmm. there's still a few key ones that we're missing no yep. spiders um no snakes no spiders that's right I, I yeah i had a I had a man on discord who was like can someone let me know if there's any spider stuff in this game because yeah, it's kind of a no-go yeah. for me i have a phobia and i said not really like a, like the doll like one of the dolls that's like chasing you at the very yes, end of benavieto in- has like spider tentacles 
and so does one of the final forms of Miranda mm. at the very end. But it's like it's spider-ish. It's not spiders straight up, you know. Yeah, but other than that, so we've got werewolves, mm-hmm. zombies, mm-hmm. Uh, vampires, creepy haunted dolls, mm-hmm. creepy baby slash fetus. That's my one. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> and the the thing from the swamp. Uh, yes, sort of swamps. fish men. Merman. Sh- that's yeah. like HP Lovecraft for a T. Like and sh- and kind of a uh, cyberpunk horror of like metal. Oh, yeah, like metal factory horror. Yeah, System like Shock must- 2 era kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. absolutely. It so really, tick- yeah. Giant, creepy giant men. They tick a lot of boxes. <laughs> yeah, creepy giant men. Huge Santa man with a, with a hammer who felt very good to take down twice. <laughs> cannibal. There's a cannibal with a hammer with an axe. Yes, yes. There's oh man, um, the baby fetus thing having a voice that was disconnected from his parents was a big reminder for me of the bear from Annihilation. I have not watched oh, Annihilation. Yeah. Have you watched oh, Annihilation? You should. Yeah. I know I should. I know I should. Fucking great. It, it it seems to just stick in people's brains, even though it like was only in the zeitgeist for however many months. People, I still still see people here and there talking about it. So <laughs> yeah, no, that's a cool one. Um, I should make a game out of that. That'd be fucking sick. A cool. Resident Evil 8-style game out of Annihilation. Mm. Isn't it like a sci-fi premise? Like in yeah. The f- yeah. But, you know, it, the RE engine is a thing. They could absolutely just repurpose it for however they like. Um, I can't remember exactly exactly what the plot is, but from memory, the very basic plot was that... It's all metaphor because it's sci-fi. Sure. But the very basic slash horror. Um, but there's like a big dome and they were like everything in that dome is fucked i think time is going forward or backwards too slowly or something is happening Mm -hmm. uh and they're like you four people just go in here (laughs) you you go do it Mm -hmm. and also work out your own personal trauma while you do it yeah classic (laughs) it's alex garland who directed it right or do you not know a fan i think so yeah he's been around for a while he's done a lot of stuff he um i'm pretty sure he wrote the script for the dmc reboot i'm pretty sure which is a weird weird credit, but mm. I'll take it. Um, but yeah, you mentioned how, you know, you've got these four locations that span different types of horror and different mm. types of monsters. But uh, in between, and oh, here we go. It's the, it's the momentous occasion where you get your fingers bitten off. A pretty cool way to kick off that whole RE4 horde sequence. Um, but in between all these major sections, these four lords that you're chasing up flasks from, Mm-hmm. you're going back to the village and, and sort of skulking around metroidvania style using the keys the new keys that you have running into new enemy encounters every time mm-hmm. and unearthing secrets and that to me is also like such a vital part of the game almost as much yeah. as the four lords you know major set pieces if you went straight from one to the next it wouldn't have the same impact i feel like mm-hmm. um do you, what, what what are your memories of like hunting for secrets because you told me you were taking your time and trying to find everything yeah I did as much of it as I could. Yeah, same. Which is fun. Yeah. It's got all the treasures. Um, Something that kept annoying me is Mm. at the very start of the village, there's a dead horse and there's a beast icon. And I kept coming back to it like, eventually I should be able to get meat from this. But no. No. (laughs) No, Um, it's only from pigs and um, and goats. Chickens. Chickens chickens. too. Yeah, but that's poultry and then there's fish. Oh, you mean meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah i got all of that which is cool Mm -hmm. um the magic fish the magic bird the magic pig uh i thought it was something which was interesting is that you there's enough meat to do all the recipes Mm -hmm. and a little bit extra except for the great faster movement speed yeah i think i I think those are behind bits that you can be locked out of permanently like during the castle dimitrescu section which you can't go back to again I think yeah. there's like, I think between when you first exit the castle and when you first run into the hag, like the, mm. the old woman who turns out to be Miranda, um, yeah. I think in between there's like a little lake and there's a bunch of fishes in the water and like sections like that, that you can't go back to later in the game when you realize I, what, what it's for. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that one specifically is the fish thing though, is that you can get the, you can pick up the recipe to get faster movement speed but that means you won't be able to get more health or better blocking defense or whatever it is yeah 
I, I feel so like, I think that's like if you're a speedrunner, sure. you can just get the fish and just do that. I yeah. think that's the idea. Yeah. But... I mean, the, my my whole playthrough, I just felt like I never had enough fish to get everything. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> it's yeah. just how it worked yeah. out. Um, yeah. But um, no, but yeah, as I said, hunting for secrets was cool. My absolute favorite, possibly my favorite moment in the game that wasn't a, a story thing, um, mm. was when you uh, you enter a. Uh, it's, it's sort of like a junkyard with a big sign out the front that says don't enter and then you go and and there's nothing going on but then you enter a hut and there's a there's a number combination lock and so you think okay where's the number combination and then there's a message on the desk next to you that says look out the window oh I and you go it. okay and then you look out and you realize there's numbers there you spend about three seconds going oh okay here are the numbers okay so there's oh three oh three and that moment a lichen pops up <laughs> it's yeah. like it's like that kind of ingenuity. I was just like, yeah, perfect. You guys, you guys know what you're doing. I, the reason I said I hated that was because I saw that and then I went, a lichen's going to pop up in the window. And then it did. And I still got scared. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't get... <laughs> the, I knew the... exactly what was going to happen, but it still had the exact same effect. Your clairvoyance like, did... What? Yeah, your clairvoyance yeah. and gaming literacy and what have you just did nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did nothing to change the outcome yeah yeah it's unfortunate i um i no i i, I got fooled i'm just like all right cool puzzle solution love it you know mm. it's what i'm here for and then just it was like oh you know let it let out a genuine yelp um, i also didn't know that going into this that because i i didn't watch any trailers literally the only thing i'd seen was a couple of minutes of the first reveal trailer mm -hmm. actually no i would have seen the whole first reveal trailer mm. and memes about lady dimitrescu sure that's all any about the game going in which is great if you watch the reveal trailer a lot of it is just cutaway shots of the louise's farmstead section yeah just the villagers looking troubled you know yeah. <laughs> and it's like great that's perfect if it was just there for content for that fine <laughs> you know if it meant you didn't have to show off too much of the, of the rest of everything past castle dimitrescu then fine I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm but i also feel like resident evil games they always start out they never end the way that they start out like mm -hmm. for example resident evil 4 the main thing that comes to mind when playing that is like you're running around the village right doing mm -hmm. all that shit. it's incredibly gray by the time you're at the end of that you're in a sparkling squeaky clean white laboratory science laboratory sort of building mm. uh, and then there's a lot of it where you're in a castle so going from the village like the village not being that big of a thing i mean those villages the whatever her name is lucrezia i can never remember what mm -hmm, mm -hmm. louisa uh it's not that yeah i'm not surprised that that wasn't that big of a factor now sure I think about it. yeah yeah it, it just didn't have a place in the in classic re end game of just urban environments yeah. wait heaps of ammo you know what you're doing just yeah. carry on and see what crazy bullshit happens next <laughs> yeah also, I don't know if you picked up on it, but it was good at the start that they they dropped it. They do this in all the Resident Evil games now, but they mentioned at the start that Mia and Ethan both had military training in yeah. between games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I heard that too, and I'm like, okay, so what does that mean? He's just better at holding guns, or what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, um, they yeah. do that with in Resident Evil Two Remake. Uh, oh yeah. Claire is like, my big brother Chris taught me how to shoot a gun and be real good, so now I know how to do all this. Yeah. Don't worry, even though I'm a college student. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's fair enough, honestly. I don't mind it as a hand wave. It like, you know, this this series is asking us to suspend disbelief anyway, so if it gives even just a simple explanation like that, I'm just like, all right, cool, cool. You didn't have to say anything, really. Um, when you got the well wheel and the, and the cranks, did mm -hmm. you just go on a spray? Just look up every well, every every crankable gear you could? Oh yeah, well I'd already uncovered all of them on there. Mm. I did that with like every every one of those things. Yeah. yeah as soon yeah. as I got the thing, I was like, oh, I can't wait to run back and yeah and unlock that. Did you use the crank on the bridge, uh, in between where the Duke is set up and where the giant statues are, where you put the thing down on the platform to go to um Heisenberg. Oh, you know so I there was like i might have forgotten about that one right so like you know in between I remember there was two bridges and i finally crossed one of them and i think i forgot about the other one yeah so what so right like 
so there's where the duke is set up in the village right in that little yeah. town square almost that has like mm -hmm. the different doorways coming off it uh -huh. where you go straight to beneviento's mansion so in between that and where you first come out from D castle to matresk which has yeah. those giant statues where you can see the factory off in the distance and, and you, it's where you first see the umbrella logo and you're like what mm -hmm. the fuck what am i and you can't do anything with it but you know yeah. what it is um so in between that area you obviously you have to fight up some lichens on the way to get back to the duke for the first time but on one of the lower levels on the other side of the river there's a crank and mm -hmm. uh you use the crank pulls down a bridge cross that bridge there's a boat and i did do this i did that yeah so you went so one sec one side of the river so there's basically two locations you can access as a result of getting to that boat do you remember what they were like they're secret <sighs> locations so it's not like landmarks one was one the cannibal's house uh no that's oh, like on the way to heisenberg's house i'm talking right. on the river okay. yeah uh, i can't remember well, so, is one the wolfsbane gun because uh, i got that the Wolfsbane gun, yeah. Um, I'm wondering where you got that. I've got I've got that noted in the Google Docs. Mm. I think that's like a, another... I think that's like when you just finish Moreau and you just sort of go off on a secret path into this other part yeah. of the village that you can skip entirely. Yeah. And there's like a little the gun hidden away, yeah. I'm almost positive that where you're talking about is where there was a secret fish, maybe? A um, secret fish? Is that what you're talking about? Well, well, that might have been near the, no, that was near the, oh, I don't that's, know, I don't that's know. where you try to enter Castle de Matresk again. I don't know. Like, it, yeah, uh, no, it's fine. Like, keeping on the map straight in your head is weird. Yeah. What I'm talking about with this boat specifically, uh, one section of the river you can go to as a result is a cave with tree roots in it. Mm -hmm. And there's like a laptop, so Chris has already been there. And uh, so there's lore mainly. And you could find a coin, which is the thing you were collecting in RE7. So it's just full, filled with all these little secrets that are just there for like people to plumb the depths, you know what I mean? And just find as much info and, and stuff as they can. Yeah, um, I got the coin, so I think I would have gone there. Yeah, you would have gone there. So you would have seen like tree roots just sort of yep. writhing around. Um, so that was a cave. On the other side, um, it's it took you back basically to where you exited Castle Dimitrescu for the first time. So you can't go back into Castle Dimitrescu, but you can go to that hut with the well in the ba in the backyard. Yeah. The well at, and and at the bottom of the and when you try and crank up that well, you get a whole mm. ladder and there's a whole cave oh, yeah. filled with like spiky platforms and stuff. And then if you crank the bridge down on the other side of that hut, there's like a tomb with infinite zombies coming out and you're like, "Why are there infinite zombies? They're not dropping any items." But then you realize you got to light one on fire. <laughs> yep that when whole I did that yeah i was trying to figure out how to do it and mm. then i was like i don't know how to do this it's clearly a trick because there's infinite spawning zombies yeah and then i looked at my phone and then i typed it in and then as soon as i typed in youtube like youtube how to get whatever treasure it is i was like i know how to do this and yeah i put my phone down and did it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> these ones but like I, for some reason like i couldn't i couldn't steer myself well enough to get that first swinging lamp to light the second torch as mm -hmm. like zombies were running around but in the meantime like i was accidentally setting the zombies on fire and, and getting an achievement i was oh, like ah, that's right. funny and then i finally lit up both and then i realized there was a torch at the end i'm like how do i oh because <laughs> i'd already been lighting the zombies on fire by accident and so it's like okay just light one on fire and get it to follow me easy peasy yeah. but it's such a cool little puzzle i thought mm. it's such a cool little tomb um did you end up getting both like completing dimitrescu's necklace because it had the two slots yes yeah i didn't so. complete um louise's necklace though i was holding on to that the entire game i had one one thing in it but i don't know where the other one was um i'm trying to remember what, what, what the process was with that one because she uncovers something right within louise's necklace like I'm not you sure. or is I it think... a different necklace i'm thinking of there's like one of those necklaces you you examine it and then you pull out mm. something and i don't remember what it was it might have been a key it might have been I don't know. I don't like the secrets that. are blurring together for me at this point, but yeah. Yeah, but Louise's necklace was another one where you can slot into. I think one was like a ruby, and then you can slot in something else. I didn't find that, but yeah. I completely, I completed the other one. Or like a cat's eye or something. Like I never, I never. Heisenberg's as soon as the treasure, was sorry, go on. Heisenberg's hammer was another combinable one. That was a cool one because I love that one because like you get that, you make the key, the horse key, and yeah. yeah, you can continue on. But like if you're smart, you know that you've already seen a horse door. In, yeah. on that same level and so you go to it and there's more stuff it's it's similar yeah. situation as with um the moreau gun it's like you, you just know there's more stuff there's more secrets and there's more enemies to tangle with along the way yeah. and it's just it's great i i, I love how they do it
you know? Because mm. the levels are Which so... Which gun was my rose gun? Um, it's the big fuck-off revolver. It's like a pistol, but with very little ammo at a time. Magnum ammo. Mm. And it's got, like, gold and stuff on it. And you can upgrade it, but it costs shitloads. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's more of a New Game Plus kind of thing. Kind of excels in that area. And and plus, when you upgrade your, your other guns, your regular guns, it, it, it only does double damage compared to those yeah. it's not like What's the, that's the wolf spain isn't it the wolf spain yeah yeah sorry yeah, yeah. we are talking about the same thing but yeah there's very little ammo for that which is upsetting yeah the magnum ammo just very very scarce and you just save yeah. it for bosses but it's the strongest gun i plugged miranda with a with a few bullets of that so and that, oh, and that I helped used out up all mine way before then <laughs> fair enough unlike the the big four-legged werewolf guys or I think I had used them on the giants, I think, which were just bullet sponges. Uh huh. Like the one to get um, Bernard Vieto's treasure, I think, was mm-hmm. one. And I think I used the rest on the cannibal treasure. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, God, that cannibal treasure. That was wild. I've got a clip uh, from that. that very easily. Mm hmm. <laughs> Did you. Um, now, when, when you. The last time you go back to the village before uh, hanging out with Heisenberg. Mm -hmm. uh there's goats hanging around Mm -hmm. black goats which just out of nowhere almost like an omen um Mm -hmm. and there's also one of the crypts is now open Mm -hmm. and there's a thing inside of it it's a slab like Mm -hmm. a half slab and do do you remember what i'm talking about do you remember where it gets taken that's yeah that's for benavieto's treasure yeah yeah you go back there and there's another fucking cannibal (laughs) It just pops up. And that was the what? first time I encountered the cannibal. I found that cannibal before the Otis Mill cannibal. And I don't I think, think the game same. intended for that. Oh, I thought it was. No, 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 no. Um, mm. But like, I don't think the game... I think the game intends for you to see the Otis Mill cannibal before the Benevieto treasure cannibal. Because oh, the Benevieto cannibal... Back and, yeah. The Benevieto cannibal just pops out of nowhere. But the Otis Mill one, it's like... It's the classic RE one thing of just like he's busy eating a corpse and then he like slowly turns around. Yeah, yeah. that that feels like much more of a grand reveal. But yeah. like, right. I, that makes sense. I think that I think it's both. I think it's good both ways because if you're mm. if you're like secret obsessed enough like me to go find Benavi- Benavieto's treasure before anything else, it's such a yeah. shock to suddenly <laughs> turn to. It's like who is this guy? What? <laughs> he's not even yeah, the that's... he's not even the Santa guy. What's going that was on? What happened to me? Because I saw the treasure thing. I was like, oh, I know what. Like, I ran back there straight away because I was like, how the fuck do I get this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like, I, I think I may note, like, because it, the Duke had already marked the Bianavetto treasure on my map, and I'm just like, what possibly looks like a lock to unlock? And yeah. of course, it's that half broken slab. So when you see that other half of the slab, it's like, okay, off yeah. we go. Um, what else can we talk about? Bon- uh, boss fights. Mm-hmm. Um, so we got Dimitres mutated, uh, Moreau, not a boss fight so much as just a weird platforming section. Uh, there is the part at the end, which is annoying, very spearing stuff at you. Uh, you drain the lake. Yes. Yes. And he's like spitting acid rain and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. That, that bit I wasn't wild about, but I like that. It's just, there is something cool about how, like having drained the water and it's like, okay, now he's not like an obstacle basically now he's actually an enemy and you actually have to fight him it's, yeah. it, it, it's a nice way of upping the stakes a little bit at, yeah. at least it's just not a very compelling firefight you know I th- yeah i think it's those there's a few of those in lots of resident evil games which mm. is bosses which are big slow things and you're in a corridor you're in corridors and you have to just run around the corridors shoot and then get around a corner mm-hmm. hide mm-hmm. them back to the next bit and then my yeah, my no, least no, not involved. <laughs> my least favorite boss fight was the guy with the fan for an upper oh, torso. Me too. Yeah, because you couldn't fit. You told to me you couldn't figure out what the hell you were supposed to do for ages. Me, it I took me a while this morning. Yeah, like I I I figured it out, but I didn't know whether like you know. Surely uh, I was thinking I was of the impression like like when I do this exact same boss fight in I don't know Spire of the Dragon or whatever. Like it's such a time honored thing to just trick you know do the matador thing of tricking a giant enemy having yeah. it run into the wall and then shooting it while it's stuck i was just doing pistol shots into his little air vent yeah and i realized soon like no that you've got to actually do extra damage just hitting the weak point isn't enough 
Yeah. And it just took ages and it just kind of sucked. And it's just, it doesn't feel scary or thrilling or anything just yeah. to just go through this trial and error process, you know? Yeah. That's what I thought as well. Cause when you shoot it, then it sets on fire and I was like, all right, while well, it's on fire, I have to mm. do something surely. And then it's not and on a... fire and then you hit it again and it becomes back on fire and. Because there's yeah. also a note right before that that says that he's unstoppable. So yeah. I thought, oh, well, I can't kill him. So Yeah. So i got to trick him into hitting something in the environment. Yeah. yeah. So you don't think, oh, but he is unstoppable. I just got to get him from the back. There's nothing that really says that. Yeah. It's, it's kind of lame. Yeah. Uh, I think I think the entire game would have been better without that boss fight. I think the pacing would have been a bit better. Mm. Now that I think about it. If you had just gone from that straight to... Uh, what's the next Heisenberg fight after that? I think there's another giant, right? There is, and there's, there is, there's another giant wolf lichen in there too. Um, no, I think, I think after Fan Man, you encounter Heisenberg. He chucks you into the lake, and then you find Chris in the tank, and then it's, oh, then it's that well, stuff. It might have been before that. Yeah, no, the stronghold is what I, I think. Um, I, yeah, they they take you to the stronghold first, which I also didn't, I wasn't crazy about that whole fight, that whole combat room where oh, you got to take down really... lichen after yeah. lichen after lichen i just found s- spots to stand still in and just shot him down and yeah it didn't feel tense like i felt like they were going for a very last of us two type scrabbling around you know fending people off sticking to the shadows being dynamic with your tactics kind yeah. of thing and because they I set guess. up the environment to like so you can like ride down a rope to the other end and just be as agile as possible you're like, but I find the best hallway at stand at the end of it. With yeah, the shotgun. <laughs> exactly. Because the... sniper, which pierces through enemies. Exactly. I've got a clip on my YouTube now of um of me getting the strategist achievement where you get three enemies in one go, mm. and it's when I first came out of the odor smell and the lichens come and attack me at that uh, point. Yes. Yeah, I got that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I think in that so... same point. Sorry, I'm just watching the cutscenes. I think I just saw Yulian get killed by Miranda. So that answers my question: where he went. Um but um but yeah three lichens come at me after the otis mill fight with the cannibal and like by as a complete fluke i held my sniper rifle up got a headshot on the first one and it pierced the other two and got them all down in one go so it's like yeah i did did the same thing and i for some reason i think i died after that and restarted and the enemies had respawned and i had to do it again and i did this exact same thing twice in a row i was like fuck yeah they want you to do this (laughs) (laughs) yeah um but yeah stronghold not really my favorite um i'm trying to think what else we could talk about that are like highlights because like in watching let's plays and uh thinking back on the game i think about other stuff that uh that i kind of look back on fondly but just don't remember immediately yeah i gotta look at the messages i sent you yeah 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 um, oh the end the end yeah okay the end sequence so let's let's wrap back around oh but also oh, credits i mean yeah, but also, before we get to the end credits, the, the what's playing on the cutscenes right now? It's mm. when you first go to Castle Dimitrescu, Heisenberg finds you, he wraps you in metal, Magneto style, um, and then takes you to meet the Four Lords for the first time, and Miranda. So there's that whole section, and then you escape with your hands cuffed. Like, that's a whole little set piece, but it's just... Mm. Because you enter back at the point where Heisenberg first met you, it feels kind of like you disappeared to a pocket dimension yeah yeah it's it's just a strange little sequence it's probably pretty important as far as the pacing of the game is concerned so that you see all these people in the flesh for the first time and see their dynamic and how they're jealous and shitty at each other Mm. but it doesn't as far as like your long-term memory of the game it doesn't really like it doesn't really like um it doesn't really sit in your memory that vividly at least from my experience but how are you feeling when all this was happening with with all these people kind of screaming at you same i think i think it was just a case of the fact that there's a lot in this game like yeah. my i finished it just under 12 hours but <laughs> there's a lot of intensity in those parts so it's easy to forget yeah a lot aspects. of people talking over each other lichens nipping at your heels yeah yeah hmm. also I'm i mean now, but... good a very good way to introduce lady dimitrescu as well if by some chance you haven't seen her before it's like yeah, because I thought she would must have been the big bad the whole time. Yeah, I think a lot of people did, but also, but just seeing her in this moment where she's like, roughly at the same at the same on the same horizontal plane as um, Heisenberg. Yeah, but she's so much taller, <laughs> and it's just like, oh shit, 
Who are all these people? And each of them it's speak up in them turn. All in the same room. Yeah. And you can see their faces really clearly. And of course, Ari engine faces are incredible. So that's really says a lot, expresses a lot. It's it's not a bad sequence. It's just not memorable. It's it's, it's weird. Hey, it's his hammer. Yeah, and that's his hammer. Yeah, we get that it's later. It's a fucking trick weapon. Yeah, I wish he could. So, I wish he could use it, but they're just like it's too heavy, you know. <laughs> so it's like, oh well, I can carry it though. All right, thanks. There is actually there's a bloodborne trick weapon called the Whirly Gig that that looks oh, yeah. like, and he looks like a bloodborne hunter. He so. does a bit for sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, no, okay. But let's talk about the ending sequence, and we could skip ahead to watch anything from the ending sequence if it like helps. Mm -hmm. But um, okay, I mean, you you defeat Heisenberg, Mecha Godzilla Heisenberg. Um, then Miranda shows up, rips your heart out. You're dead. Chris confirms the kill, and then we're Chris. And uh, as we mentioned, it's a it's a real release. Um, but from that moment on, what, what jumps to your mind? What, what did you want to talk about? Oh, I meant I meant the post credit. Oh right, even past that moment. Okay. Yeah, because we talked about that Chris bit. Yeah, so like Ethan defeats the boss, realizes he's dying, gives Rose to Chris um says take care of it for me and he very definitively dies at that point um which is good i think it was a good way to go out um and and of course mia and rose and chris are together as a unit again they they tease re9 which you were really pleased by like just yeah so the way that it became it became very apparent playing this game that like the way that i look at the resident evil games now is similar to the star wars in that they're it's kind of in trilogies yep one two and three are all very similar games four yep. five and six are all cut from the same mold mm -hmm. and now seven eight and nine i guess will be the winters saga now yeah big time um, not, not the ethan winters but the winters yeah. for sure and so the reason I, I bring up those two as well is because there's there's narrative elements that tie into into gameplay things what i mean by that is um it's the first game you're playing as jill and chris who are just rookie star recruits yeah um and so they can they're competent but they're not as competent which they is only why have eight around... they only have eight inventory slots yeah. exactly but that's why you're running around very stilted in the mansion and you're it's kind of hard to shoot it's, enemies, it's, right? it's kind of thematically yeah. appropriate yeah. yeah that that said i'd still i don't know if you've seen donkey's video on re1 hd but um, it, it's very good at sort of display, like putting on display just the agony and ecstasy of that game where it's just like, yes, it's really good at immersing you and making you feel like you're, uh, you know, you're you're backed up into a corner and all that. But it's also really cumbersome and fucking annoying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Um, and then you get to RE2 and if you're playing as Liam, you're playing as a cop. Mm -hmm. um, a rookie cop. Yep. And then three, uh, you're playing as Jill, who's a little bit more experienced plus cast. So then when you get to RE4... Leon's already gone through RE2. Yep. Um, so he should be a lot better at being a soldier. And you have a lot more control. Big time. Over it in that regard. And then you get to RE5, and Chris is already a fucking super soldier, so he can do whatever. Mm -hmm. And then RE6 is... From Leon what I understand, has... just a globe-trotting action movie. Yes, he's already gone through RE2 and RE4. He's yeah. perfectly equipped equipped to run around and jump and do all crazy action shit and it's worth mentioning as well like four was the first game to have anything resembling mercenaries like there yeah. wasn't like you unlock stuff in the in the classic trilogy mm. but it was like extra characters and the gameplay didn't change and there wasn't any arcade yeah. elements but four realized it could do that so yeah. so applying that logic to these games mm -hmm. as i mentioned i haven't played re7 but i assume that it's like little less action based than this one mm -hmm. probably a bit more subdued and a bit more akin to re1 that's, that's my understanding my yeah. impression yeah then you get to re8 which is you get a bit more action because ethan knows how to shoot a gun do whatever mm -hmm. and then we're heading to resident Evil online where yes. we're obviously playing as rosemary who has been trained by chris since she was a baby and she apparently has superpowers and because she's the daughter of a mold man I've heard people speculate that they're just going to make, like, that they may have accidentally written, well, not accidentally, but, like, sort of made it so that Rose is, like, overpowered as a protagonist because of these mold powers, which she's very aware of, which she's tapping into untold potential with. Yeah. And that they might make her the villain and then switch you over to 
Chris or Leon or somebody else who's like mortal. Maybe. Um, I've had because that it's a bit raised. Too early to, to speculate that it totally is. <laughs> I I don't think they know who the person approaching the jeep is. You know what I'm referring to? Like at the very end. Yeah. Yeah, where they drive away, but then they come to a stop, and there's obviously somebody walking towards the jeep. Oh yeah, yeah. They they'll figure that out. Later. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're just. <laughs> it may well be the protagonist. It may well just be like the support main supporting character, the Chris equivalent. Yeah. Maybe they bring Leon out of retirement or jill helps out or whatever yeah but walking, yeah the telltale's walking dead ends the same way but exactly like, yeah, yeah yeah you're right and then they just were like oh it's just two of the other survivors you met earlier <laughs> like yeah, and they die as soon and as they die instantly the yeah starts. exactly <laughs> it's like it's not a mystery they wanted to deal with very long clearly yeah so what was the other thing i was gonna add about that yeah i uh, my thought and what i would like as well is that it would be similar to like it would be similar, but maybe you have a handful of like dishonored powers, maybe. Oh yeah, Very limited. But that's what I would like to see, basically. Resident Evil immersive sim. Exactly. Could work. Absolutely. No one thought first person Resident Evil would work, but here we are. Yeah, but I mean, like, yeah, just a a light power that you could use, like yeah. a like a Siri in Witcher. She can only blink, but mm. it makes those sections the most fun combat sections in the game. So. Yeah, big time. And this is a series that very, you know, even if it gets tonally weird and excessive, like it knows the no, ramifications. It very <laughs> considers, it very carefully considers the ramifications of giving you, say, a tank. You know, like it doesn't yeah. do that lightly. It it's like you know, again, this is this is what we're going for. Hop on or get off. They realize that they need the tank to be in the world for a very short amount of time mm -hmm. because it can't exist for too long yeah i was fully expecting to just gun down crowds of lichens like to, mm. for them to just fill the screen oh, with lichens. a tank yeah because they did a similar thing in re4 where you get but you get on a turret and uh, i think it's i think it's the president's daughter who's driving and you're just mowing down um villagers mm. who That's, just that, who, yeah yeah that would be good for the moment but that would be i think that would the shark would officially have been jumped. Yeah, in hindsight, that would have been strange. Especially <laughs> going into the Heisenberg fight. Like, oh, now they were doing this shit? Like, all right, steady on, steady on. You're in a fucking battle bot tank and he's a truckosaurus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, what's that? And, and there's lightning and stuff. And it's, yeah. And he turns into Magneto. Resident Evil Village. <laughs> like, <laughs> something I messaged you too. They're like, they're like, oh, the tank's made out of a metal polymer composite, so he can't use his metal powers. And it's yeah. like, do you know what metal polymer? It's it means it's metal mixed with plastic. I don't think so I, I, I don't think I assume they're not using um, metamycete correctly either. I just no. <laughs> like this is all ridiculous science, yeah. all of it. I'm saying because the metal is mixed with plastic, you can't control it. It's like, bro, mm. Magneto controlled the iron in someone's body and mm. ripped it out of the skin yeah and i mean fuck brian singer but that was cool that was really yeah. cool <laughs> yeah um yeah that was great how did you feel um in the chris section you went to chris. what yeah when i what i've heard jokingly called exposition lab or yeah. exposition cave where you basically learn that the mold in seven and eight is the thing that inspired the zombie viruses in the classic trilogy and by extension, the sequel trilogy for four, five, six. How do you feel about um, them retconning so that this is like the granddaddy of viruses? Well, I picked up on that as soon as I saw the umbrella logo on the plinth. Sure. I realized that that's where this was going to go. Right. Um. So I didn't have a big revelation moment. It sort of came to me over time. And yeah, that, mm. it's it's a cool. It's a very cool way to have umbrellas origins. I think. Mm. Yeah. And like it, it's it's an abstract yeah. enough symbol that like you can buy them being like yeah let's call it umbrella and say that this symbol this ancient pattern is a is an umbrella yeah and the idea of Spencer being like a student of Mother Miranda mm. <clears throat> pretty retconny but I, it's very interesting to me yeah that Spencer would be like oh and I, I did not be under this being whatever. I, I played a little bit of five but I did not play enough to see Spencer in that I didn't realize he was in that you would you also wouldn't have played enough to hear Sh Sheva going Chris! excessively um which is why i keep saying it like that uh who, who was saying that Sheva, the other player in re5 
Oh, right. Okay. Does she appear anywhere else in the series? No. No. Um, (laughs) There's a button. There's buttons in that game to call out the other person. Oh, I see. And when I was playing that, a lot of our couch call obsessions were spamming funny voice lines. Fair enough, yeah. Chris! Chris, I'm really... I'm really... I'm afraid to try that single player. Everything I've heard just says it's like it's just an exercise in frustration mm, to yeah, just t- deal with the AI in that game. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. One of these days, I'll play co-op. Um, yeah, just trying to. I'm just looking through my um, my notes here and just trying to find something else to talk about. We've been uh, going for an hour, so if you can't have of anything else, that's fine. <laughs> well, why don't we talk about the bookends, the Tim Burton animation, and how we learn more. We, we like get an extra section added at the end mm. to fill out the story. So it's pretty obvious by that point that it's just there to reflect what literally happens in RE8. You know, you meet yeah. the Four Lords and then the Witch. Um, I've seen, I've <laughs> watched at least a couple of streamers just watch that sequence for the first time and just be like, what is this? What is this Tim Burton-y kind of... This isn't... I wasn't, you know, like, cool. do you, yeah, it, it's something new for sure. It's it's definitely not something you would have seen in an RE game before, like a full on, um, prettily animated character animated, uh, Coraline animation. Do, there are games I have seen it in before though. Most sorry? notably, Dark Souls is starts almost the exact same way. <laughs> not the fairy tale book, yeah. but Dark Souls one starts with. Back long ago, there were four lords. Now you got to fucking kill those lo- four lords so you can kill the big enemy at the end. <laughs> oh, also, very. Well, I'll go back to this. But uh, Miranda's daughter being named Eva, Eva, bit on the nose, but it's fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm missing the reference. It, other than Evelyn being inspired by her. Eva, exact same as Evangelion. Eva, Eve start of new life okay so more the biblical reference than the neon genesis reference <laughs> yeah well the neon genesis neon is, genesis is, is and re8 the same thing taking the same cue i get it okay yeah. if you're going to tell me that this this game ripped off neon genesis i was going to be like oh, mm. <laughs> okay <laughs> if yeah if ethan's name was adam that's the only thing that might, would have made it more on the nose yeah 100 percent. 100 um but yeah what was what were we talking about before that <laughs> um uh the storybook stuff Oh yeah, yeah. So Dark Souls starts almost the exact same way, mm-hmm. um, except it's not presented as a storybook. It's some ring story. Uh, there's another game that does that too. Uh, Dragon Guard Three does that as well, but there is a storybook. Uh huh. Um. So there you go. Mario oh, Galaxy cool. storybook unlockable. Storybook. <laughs> also, you know, time on it. Some, <laughs> something that the art style remind me a lot of was the best scene in the. Deathly Hallows, either one or two, same movie, hmm. where someone is, uh, Hermione's retelling the story of the Deathly Hallows. Do you remember Yes. That? Oh, I do. And there's I an animation do. that isn't anything like the rest of the movie. That's it's 100% like shadows accurate. Like... Yeah. Oh, my God. Wow. I have not thought about that for a long, long time. <laughs> yeah. That's the first thing I thought of. I was like, they're doing the thing from Harry Potter. They're doing Harry Potter. There's even a it's castle. Like... Yeah, yeah, it's just a visual style. Yeah, hundred percent. And so, like, RE doing it is not—it's not out of step for games, and it's not really out of step for RE. RE like is a series that seems to delight in just yeah, doing off kill things. It was rad. Yeah, it seems cool. Yeah, the whole game was rad. To sum it up, oh, yeah. um, as someone who, yeah, like I said, only finished RE four, um, only has kind of a touch and go experience with the mm-hmm. other games. Um, I was thrilled. This is the with- best one. <laughs> The best the best mainline RE game, you say? Yeah. Holy easily. crap. It's a big well, call. RE 2 remake's pretty good. But... Yeah. Um, look, uh, 4 has a very, very special place in my heart. It's got a, a, partic- a very particular kind of silliness and tone that I don't think this game ever approaches or tries to. Leon. Yeah, Leon. But also, like, you know, I knew you'd be fine if you landed on your butt. You know, it's that kind of slightly badly translated localized kind of no one energy. should ever take it seriously no exactly it's like robocop like how did it anyway, anyway. yeah, yeah. We, we, well eight definitely wants you to like just take it as seriously as say well maybe not like last of us two level but like yeah just it, it's it's entering prestige territory it wants you to be like invested in ethan 
And uh, whereas yeah, RE4, I... it's just like, you just want to root for Leon. You don't have to love Leon or be sad about him dying potentially. Yeah. But you just gotta you just gotta be on board. Whereas this, you gotta be on board and uh you also gotta be, you know, emotionally invested. And Ethan uh and that's so ma- sorry. E- e- yeah, sorry, I've, I've made my point. Yeah, what what do you wanna say? Ethan has so many one liners like after he beats bosses. That's true. And it's like that's true. It's like I don't like this because it's You're the one who's cursed. And, yeah. Yeah. I guess it's because it's cringy and silly, but it's like, do you actually want people to like this character? Because you're not helping. Mm. Yeah, I've seen, like, um, Demi Lardner streaming this game at the moment. She's like, yeah, Ethan's a massive cockhead, but I'm loving this game to death. Like, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and I think that's a common experience. It's just like, Ethan's his, just a... His voice lines take himself out of the situation, if that makes sense. <laughs> like, he seems to trivialize what yeah. is actually happening in front of him. Like, it, there's a bit in RE7 that I've seen where it's just like, who built this stuff, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's special. Like, just that yeah. classic sarcasm. On, on going cutting like, everything. People are like Ethan Winters, we will harness the power of Rosemary and create life and humanity. And he's like, Give me back my daughter, you bitch. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> what don't you get about this? I'm her daddy. I'm Shut up. Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, I'm looking forward to playing as Rose in the next one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'll be a nice change. I don't mind nice, Ethan nice, in, on the whole, but yeah, let's go. Something different is definitely worth it. story is over. Sorry? The father's story is over. Correct. They, they, you know, um, in the reveal trailer, they say his story will end. Oh. But they were very blunt. And like, in re- you know, at the time, we had no idea what it, what, what was, who he was, what they were referring yeah. to. But you watch it back now, it's like, oh, that's what they meant. This is, the, this is the last Ethan game. So. Goddamn right. <laughs> yeah. Blocks of two, which is fine um have you seen ethan winter's face someone has in the model viewer if you look at him in the model viewer his face is completely in shadow but someone's modded it to take that out and there's a fully rendered face under it oh well i'm pretty sure capcom released a proper render as well Um, oh yeah and he looks like griffin mcelroy he does a bit (laughs) very uh, uh, you know blonde haired blue eyed captain america ish guy yeah and it's like, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> There's not, nothing exceptional. But that's kind of the point, I guess. It's funny that the, um... Oh, what? The Washington Post 12 hours ago. The real tragedy of Ethan Winters. Resident Evil's village idiot. Okay. That's very nice. Yeah. Um, do we want to Do we wanna try and find the lead in that? Or do we want to wrap it up? Oh, yeah. I think, I think it's talking about literally what we were just talking about. Cool. Because the, the lead of this is, after an epic violent battle, a dying dragon curses Ethan Winters with its last breath. And the only thing Ethan can muster up as a comeback is basically, no, you. So, which is what you're talking about with the, no, you're the one who's cursed. Yeah, that's exactly the line I'm talking about, yeah. Um, the real tragedy is, despite the game's every effort to portray him as a desolate vessel for the player, his dogged dump assistance finally allowed a part of himself to pierce through um yeah mm. okay I actually agree i like this article anyway okay <laughs> yeah uh, no I, i'm much the same look i i'm endeared to him like i was happy to play this whole game with him and that felt pretty so I, like i can only imagine how seven and eight players feel but uh yeah bring on rose rose mm-hmm. seems cool rose seems a bit more interesting so mm-hmm. mm. um yeah i think we i think we can wrap it up there um yeah i might i'll definitely play mercenaries at some point today but also castlevania netflix season four is out so i might watch some of that too i don't know i made the best city skyline city i've ever made before and it's not destroyed with gridlock traffic so i'm gonna keep going with that incredible well yeah don't let me stop you uh thanks for watching everybody um yeah uh, we're about to defeat the last sister to you last sister in the uh gameplay which is still going on my screen oh okay right right, right. <laughs> okay well enjoy um all right thanks for watching everybody uh we'll see you later bye Strange. bye